Greetings, family. This is Bomani Tamba, and welcome to our Black Star Pan African Community uh, Conference Call Meeting. And today's date is Sunday, March 26 of 2023. And yes, family, uh, we're talking about our, our wonderful community that uh, we're building from the ground up, uh, 15 acres and 60 acres in Jahadzi in the central region of Ghana. So family, what I usually have is a newsletter that talks about our community. And then I usually have a few members uh, here on the call with us and we just give updates and dialogue uh, and have dialogue as far as um, the process of uh, making it to Africa, living, doing business and how to move and things like that. Uh, so we get into all of those dialogue. Uh, so yes, uh, the foundation is always about our land and community investment, uh, Black Star Pan-African community. All right, so what I'm going to start with is a uh, screen sharing. And where is And this is a newsletter that I put together and uh, we just usually update it for conference call purpose. Uh, so this uh, gives you this, uh, well, it gives you access to this, all of the documentation and links uh, for the community. So it's something that, uh, it's a lot of information. So we're not gonna go through all of it in detail, just like the website, but we're just gonna briefly go through it and always advise everyone that's interested in learning more about our Black Star Pan-African community uh, for you to just request an email with all of the files that we have, that we have, you know, the uh, community overview, uh, bylaws, you have, the committee information and just all in between details as far as documentation, as far as uh, the surveys, uh, uh, incorporation, and uh, so on. Uh, so that's uh, one thing I just you know, recommend anyone that's listening right now and they know that that's what they're open to. Uh, beyond that, you can you know, use this uh, newsletter and also you can use all the information that we have on our website. Uh, so. That is how we have information shared. That way you can just process it in your own time. And you know, when you wanna talk, we can talk and we can give you more information. And then if you're physically able to get to the country or you're in country and you need to come by and see what we do in our Black South Pan-African community, we have an office right there outside of our 15 acres, or I should say it's kind of in between, it's closer to 15 acres, but it's in between the 15 and 60 acres, but it's in another community development. Um, so it's a three bedroom, two bathroom house that we just have modified as our business office. And we're gonna be building the energy there as time go along. But the foundation of that office was for us to have um, a consistent presence there to be able to just help our members also be able to uh, do public relations in the area and also be able to take people to the land and show people around and be able to host our guests and host our groups when they come along. And that way we have a foundation so that office is there and uh, we're gonna put more work into the office to make it a real estate development office. So as time go along, you know, we're just putting elements of things in place little by little. And as we you know, have more members come along, uh, the goal is just for, you know, those who just wanna work with us on different things, just work with us and connect with us. It's a lot of different things that we can work on and there's a lot of different things that we're already working on. Uh, so it's just up to the individual to put forth that effort, uh, we're at the point where we're moving ahead and um, we can't just keep up with uh, who's not doing this and who's not doing that. Uh, we just all have to take uh, some level of accountability if we wanna see this energy progress. Uh, so the land is there, the energy is there. And uh, once we get uh, the next set of people paperwork, then more people can start building. Uh, once we get more things in place then more people can start doing a whole lot more. Uh, but the goal is, the foundation is built already. So as this foundation is built, uh, we're gonna keep on bringing groups there and keep on just presenting you know, what we have in the town as a pan-African town where we can build, you know, you know basically just a nice uh, pan-African community based on the elements of uh, black corporate economics. Uh, so, so far so good. And um, what I'm gonna do is just uh, scroll down some more and then go through some of the things that uh, is going on our community and some of the updates, and then this uh, some of the access uh, to this uh, more information for those who just want to process information because that's 
ultimately what we have. And as time go along, um, you know, the 60 acres is the only thing that's uh, uh, available at this moment uh, because the 15 acres is all, you know, taken up uh, with, you know, with those of us who have just acquired the last of the land in the last year or so. Uh, so all that's left is for paperwork to be completed. But the next project is a 60 acres, which has more than just residential. It has aspects of uh, commercial. So once I scroll down, we'll look at the uh, site map and I'll explain these things also more in details. And scrolling down, so this is um, outside of uh, Nana Haiti's uh, palace. That's Nana Haiti and Kente Clark, myself with the white shirt, and the, uh, our consultant uh, to the left, uh, along with the surveyor, and then the attorney to the right in blue. Uh, so this is the start of the project, and just working with the different people and the Lands Commission to get our you know, land organized. So that's how we uh, started it, uh, building the project from the ground up. All right, so this is a newsletter that gets sent out and it just usually have a conference call dates, um, the next conference call. So that's it right there. Then you scroll down some more, just give you just the link for Zoom. So it's always the same information uh, and always the same time frame. Uh, so uh, that's done. So it's gonna be easier for people could you just be clear about the conference call and this. All you have to do is click on a link and join. So this is our incorporation for Black South Pan-African community in our tax uh, identification number. Uh, this is one of our last groups uh, there in Ghana, and that's uh, in December 2022. So that's actually December 20, 29th uh, of our last year. Uh, so that's our group in uh, every six months. Uh, over the last three years, we brought groups there and just showed them the energy in the community, just kind of building the energy up, letting more people know about Jahadzi, which is right there in, outside of Winneba in the central region. And it's uh, right there with ocean access. We're literally two miles away from the ocean. Uh, so once we go to YouTube videos, you know, you'll be able to see some of the, the highlight videos that we have available. All right, so in, that was inside the house and now this uh, outside the house. And this uh, photo is just from one of the, uh, the tours before that was May, 2022. So that's what we do. Our goal is just to bring our groups and then also bring other groups to the, to the uh, office uh, and also to the 15 and the 60 acres, the business uh, district, and also to uh, the beach area. And that's just our basic uh, tour uh, throughout the area. And then sometimes the chief is there, and if so, they would pay him a visit. Now, so all of this information that I talk about, uh, just make sure everybody have the same access to information, is on this link here, africaforafricans.org, Black Star Repatriation and Pan-African Community. So that's the link that gives uh, the full access to all of the documented details, which we're going to go through, and also give you access to the links to the videos, which are on YouTube, and the pictures on Facebook. And that's our Facebook uh, group page and also YouTube link. Now, this is the uh, 15 acres uh, layout. So this is what's, uh, this was the last plot left, and uh, it's all done. So now our goal is to work to build us a technology slash business center, uh, entrance slash security, security post, uh, community center, and then the rest in orange is all the 50 uh, plots for residents. So people are building their homes over the period of time. Uh, right now there's about four or five homes up and a few more foundations are being built for us. So, Little by little, we'll get to it. And then now our next vision is to just rebuild those, uh, the roads and just uh, putting in some elements of uh, you know, a road uh, to where, you know, we just you know, build out the roads and lay out. But the layout of the community is exactly how it looks uh, based on the site map and based on when we look at it on Google Earth. Right, and now uh, this is our 15 acre survey. So on the surveys, you see the land size and as I mentioned, the similar to the layout. So you just um, basically mark out the uh, layout based on how it actually looks and just put your own design in and then you get your survey to put elements of things in place to where it's the actual layout of a community uh, where the road markings are and the people plot numbers are or members plot numbers are. Uh, so these things are assigned and stamped um, as um, 
all the other paperwork. So that's the 15 acres uh, uh, survey and the uh, 15 acres uh, uh, land site layout. So that is it for uh, phase one. And uh, on the side details, uh, this is general information we go over on some conference calls. Um, and over a period of time, we just go over it all together. Uh, that way we just go, no, go to go into information and not just sit, stand, uh, uh, look in here and just read not all the information, but it's uh, a lot of details. So um, it's um, when I put, so the uh, community, uh, as far as phase uh, two, uh, let me talk about phase one. Phase one, as mentioned, the 60 plots, 15 acres, and that's the layout that you see right there. This, uh, it's simple and easy, residential and commercial. The commercial plots are about uh, four plots. Uh, that's for the community center and the business center. And also about one for, or, or I should say four to, four to five, because uh, it's the entire front section. So we have a big enough area for our future community uh, center and business uh, technology center. So it, this gives us enough room to just make all the moves that we need to make and get all the things that we need to get in place. Uh, so that was the vision of that. But in order to expand to this, be able to do a lot more and put other things in place to where we're actually building out um, our community slash our own this ecosystem, um, the 60 acres has given us a lot more room to do a whole lot more. So uh, the layout that we have, uh, in phase two is uh, it's 240 plots, uh, which is 60 acres. Uh, so this is include, and this these uh, dimensions can be plus or minus. Uh, it's not, on, not, not, not concrete or just uh, permanently set as we're still trying to look over this, adjusting the layouts based on other people who wanna do certain things. So it's 30 plots uh, uh, for farming and you can you know, calculate um, you know, four plots close to an acre, even though it's less than an acre. Uh, so that's a big size uh, piece of land, 120 for residential. So that's half of the, you know, the 60 acres, 30 acres. That's all for residential. So we have more of this residential plots available. That you know, because our goal is to build homes, and you know, people who have homes can also build business in their homes, and uh, just make it look more like for, of a community. And we just do many aspects of things inside of our homes, right? So 24 uh, plots for apartments slash condos. Uh, so for those who wanted to invest in apartments, um, you know, we have designated location areas to do that. And also for those who want to look to do more um, you know, on-site commercial investment, uh, you have 24 plots that could be used to build, with it, whether it's your storage, your warehouse, things of that nature. Uh, four plots for community store, four for medical center, uh, four for education slash training uh, building, four for maintenance facility, and eight additional plots for community and business center. So trying to make this a, a community to where we, know we have active environments to just you know, do all the basic things that we need to do, uh, including just planting a whole bunch of fruit trees and just uh, general plants and uh, vegetables. So you know, that's part of building your ecosystem. And that's the good thing about just having fertile land, just a whole bunch of land. We can just expand and work on it. And as time go along and we want to invest in more land, uh, those opportunities are available, uh, especially if you want to build bigger industries or, or we have investors who want to do certain projects. Uh, so that's the good thing about this uh, us uh, being connected to the town and uh, working with the chief there, Nana Haiti, to this uh, you know expand the vision because it's an untapped area where it's um, you know the the, the the next city over uh, Winnipeg. That's where most people go to do certain things. But uh, this uh, small town can be expanded. And uh, many things can happen. So it takes a while to find places like this. But once you put these deals together, the goal is to just build on top of it and build on top of it and keep on this you know, energy going. And that's why we bring groups there and invite other people to bring their groups there so we can just get them a tour of the land. And you know, you just never know who you may meet or who may want to connect with us because we have a lot of things set as far as a foundation. And if we have other people coming and connect with us, it's a lot more we can do. Our phase three vision was always a beach town. Um, uh, or in a sash industrial park. So that is that ongoing vision. And as we just learn more about how to get these things worked out more efficiently through the lands commission and get the land we need and get things organized, um, we can push more on that. But uh, you know, the goal is just to get some, a few things more done on phase two. The main thing that we need to do on phase two right now is to get a good deal um, on, on a bulldozer to where we can just efficiently just get the 60 acres uh, clear, and then also to use that bulldozer to clear, 
clear the main road that needs to connect to the, the 15 acres and also make our way around the actual community and get uh, the roads cleared and then get unnecessary um, trash or unnecessary trees that we have had cut down or a pile of this you know, as the, you know, part of certain things is uh, removed from the land. So, you know, we have to consistently do our maintenance. So that's a big part of that whole operation, this, us just maintaining it and keeping things going. So that's, um, you know, what we have to just keep on working on. And that's what we've been doing over the period of time. Uh, so it's a lot goes into this. And that's why we have to have energy there, office there. And, as, and we have people temporarily coming by also working. And then we have people there in the town working with us. Uh, and that's because we just have to just have that underground present. And just like we have our, you know, our consultant uh, working with the Lands Commission to get paperwork done and working with a surveyor. And uh, you know, as we work and operate from here in America, we just have to have that underground operation going consistently. And that's how we've been able to get things done. And beyond that, it's difficult to get things done in the country based on the fact that you, know, you don't have those elements and things in place. And you have to just do a whole lot of micromanage and you have to stay on top of people and stay on top of things or things will just fall apart quick. And so all this uh, vision of a beach town and that area, um, you know, there's no limitation from, you know, you know, from resorts, shops, bars, restaurants, entertainment area. It's all about us just connecting the network and right people to work with us. Because once we start expanding on these things, we have to be able to just work with other groups and other networks of people. Uh, so I've done as best as I can do. And I try to do more as far as networking and building fresh relationships with people, but uh, anyone who ever want to connect us with people from grant writers to people who can actually just help us or work with us, uh, you know, whether it's partnership or whether it's for a commission or whether it's uh, for them to just get paid out, right, to help us work on things, open to many of those things. Uh, we have no limitation on those things. Uh, you get to the point where you, have, you can only do so much and then from there on, we have to just do collective, you know, you know, we have to put our collective energy together to make a lot more done. Uh, so individuals are responsible for their own home, but uh, you know, we as the people are responsible to building out a community to, to make it work and to make it to where it's something uh, you know, efficient. And so as I scroll down, um, people ask for the breakdown of the land. So this is what we have as the breakdown of the land uh, in uh, cold hard numbers, uh, core numbers, 3,500, that includes 500 administrative costs and that's just our land. And then you have survey and registration, that's 350 and 700. So these are the things that uh, we have uh, set up and uh, the stable numbers and then you go below and we have homeowners association membership dues per household. So trying to just get something basic going and that also contributes to the maintenance of the land, uh, security people that we always have on the land and um, to getting things done at the office and also to help us recruit the help that we need. So, and ultimately just maintain and uphold um, the uh, community. So these are all the things that we have just written down in details in our community overview and so on to just give clarity that way everyone is clear on what we're doing so we can just uh, flow with the energy and get things done. All right, so we're set for a 99 year um, lease uh, on our memorandum, memorandum of understanding for our 50, 15 and 60 acres of land. Um, and also our land survey and registration. These are things that we scroll down, you'll see more of. Uh, land clearing, grading, and pillars. So those are the things that come with uh, the setup of the land. Once we uh, get it clear, right now we have the pillars on there already. Um, and as pillars need to be replaced, we replace them, but that's the markers for your land. And then we do have a private Facebook uh, community page, which we haven't used much of, but uh, those are things that's in place for us to communicate and share ideas and do different things. Just like we have the WhatsApp platform for all of our group members to share thoughts, ideas, communicate, and for us to also post updates. And the final thing that we look to work for everyone is uh, after survey is titles and deeds. 
And in general, the goal is just to build the infrastructure energy to this, get more things going along. So working one plan at a time and working from one plan to the next, uh, little by little and getting more and more people involved. So um, I ended right there with Bolo's and after 60 acres, because that is what we permanently need to just start focusing on also is this heavy equipment and heavy machines that we can use and just be more efficient on our land operation. So again, family, uh, this is the foundation that we have built and the goal is just to keep on building on it. And the most important thing is we have a foundation to build on and something that we'll work towards and we have partners with us in this. And as we grow, the stronger we get. So this is the uh, 60 acres and our visionary expansion. Uh, and that is our land survey. And it's marked just like the rough draft layout that I'm gonna show you, but also when I mentioned the different uh, plot size that's available. So half of it is residential and we can even modify some of it and just make more space, especially if people just wanna invest more in apartments because that would just increase the amount of people that we have that just may wanna live uh, without having to invest in building a home. So that's always a thought. And as I mentioned, those uh, stores and key places that we have for our business and our operation is uh, right there along and then commercial plots and uh, farming plots available. So that's a rough draft of what you would put together in a digital scope and build from there on. So as I mentioned, everything is grassroots like that. So we just show elements of this, everything that we're working on little by little. All right. And these are some of the, you know, we have, we have a whole lot of videos out from citizenship, citizenship videos to business and investment videos to this um, land tour videos, but these are the 10 committees that uh, we have set up uh, that we look to just build more people as we just expand in numbers and get more people to lead committees uh, and which covers all aspects of what we need to be focused on. And without going into full details, let me just go through uh, the names of them. Business and professional affairs, uh, safety, security, and surveillance, educational, cultural, and social affairs, sustainable energy and utilities, medical and wellness, planning and development, maintenance and landscaping, waste management and recycling, agriculture and livestock, bylaws and homeowners, homeowners affair. And this is one of our old videos on the land and uh, some of these are videos where it just shows us this on the land where it's completely cleared and the pillars all set up. Uh, so we've been to all phases of this, how the land look. And the good thing is when you're building from the ground up, what we're doing is just recording while everything goes up and you'll see the growth over the period of time. Uh, so that's uh, one of our group pitches, um, one of our first group pitches actually. And uh, when we first actually went to see the land after the setting up the operation in September, 2019. Uh, so that's uh, Chief Donna Haiti and that's uh, some of his elders and that's our group. And uh, you know that's what we do with this network and connect and uh, share the energy and the goal is just to keep building energy and it's a long-term project and it's something that's set for us to just uh, really just benefit from the future by putting in the work uh, now. And these are some of the old videos on uh, Facebook uh, when we first got our, our people to do the research and some of the older numbers of the land and so on. Uh, more business and investment conference and one of our first photos on the land and it was just raw like that and we went to work and cleared it. One of the first homes built and this is, it has a wall now and it's completely done, uh, but this is one of the draft of it uh, from one of the videos. And it's just a list of details for consultation for people who may need help uh, to work on things outside of uh, the tour operation or the community that we're doing things for members on. And as we scroll down, uh, these are some of our ventures uh, to mainly Ghana, but many other countries from 2006. So we'll put the foundation energy in of just uh, building tourism and learn about business investment and land and real estate development. And the goal is just to empower ourselves uh, with knowledge, education, wisdom, just all the good stuff that we need 
to this build from the future on. So as we grow, as we learn, as we know more, as we connect, we just share the experience and share those elements of those things so we can figure it out together and just grow together as a people. Uh, so this uh, just take us back in time with uh, this, this is how we build this energy to make this repatriation move in Africa by this building roots and culture tourism. And then, you know, what, we, what I have on here is just all of our tour schedules. So on my way to Senegal and Gambia in the next few days for another tour journey. And some of the people I'll be talking with are going to be looking to be a part of our future community, whether it's out there in Ghana or what we decide to do or figure out later on in Liberia. And, you know, we just keep building energy this and then we're connecting people to people that we know there in Senegal and Gambia. And then we're just doing this incredible journey. So, um, Looking forward to that. And then when we come back uh, a few weeks later, or I should say um, over a month uh, later, we're going to be back in Ghana. So May 29th, uh, we're going to be visiting the land again. And I got a big group of people uh, excited and ready to see what we've been working on and see how they can just connect with us. So it's always a good thing. It's just time is the only factor. It's just everything just take time from the delays into the having to go back and forth. Uh, but it's um it's international business that is fine as we're trying to operate from here you know in the U.S. to there in Ghana and then just having people that we have back and forth just working together to get things done. And that's our incredible schedule. This is across eight different countries uh, between this year and next year. And um, I'm a person that's looking to keep on investing you know my business profits in Black South Pan African community and it's the future of where we're going to build our you know, our headquarters and where we're gonna build a whole lot of things. So it's worth the investment uh, to just keep building and looking for other people to join us. So if anyone is interested, make sure you just check out all the documentation all over the network that we have. And I'll get right to our YouTube page. Uh, if you click on that link, it will just load you here. And it shows you multiple playlists of multiple tours that we have in different countries. But uh, when you scroll down some more, you see Black Star Pan African Community. And it goes back from uh, you know some of our last conference calls that we have and last videos on the land showing the business uh, district, showing the 15 acres, the 16 acres, showing different people plots. Um, uh, visiting some of our you know, members that live there, watching other people construction go up. And we have another video that's by the beach. These are all videos from last year. And as you scroll down some more, you see different time frame. But I usually just mark the dates in almost every video. Uh, so you can see the flow of just our progress. And you, know, you have another, you have me and Azebo classic videos with us in front of the uh, our Black Star Pan African Community Office slash house. And just talking to people and people know that this is a community where if you need to live temporarily, you can live there. And if you just need to connect with us or if you need for us to work on project for you, if you need to go pick up all your legal paperwork, everything um, from, our, from our consultant or our surveyor dealing with our legal paperwork will be brought to the office. Uh, so it's somewhere that we just look to build up and we look to just hold the lease there in the town and the community because also it gives us a good position to move around. Uh, more videos of Azebo and myself and uh, other videos just, uh, just talking about the community. And then you have another year, um, this is uh, May 2022. So every year, um, uh, at that point, it was every six months that we went to the land where they're shooting seven to 10 videos or a lot more, and there's just showing updates. So as you go there, um, what you see now, you'll see something different. You know, you just see a little improvement at a time. And we're just showing it over a time span of just um, you know, uh, from days to months to years. And this is just something where you look, it's 149 videos. Uh, so anyone can process the videos and they go all the way back to September 2019. And that's our goal. Our goal is just to show the, our incredible growth uh, because the things that we've been able to achieve there, this uh, getting land, building the foundation of a community is uh, very tricky and difficult in Africa, especially countries like Ghana. Uh, so, uh, you know, you have to be ready to work together with your people here, there in Ghana, the people at the Lands Commission, the attorneys, your consultants, and you just all have to figure it out. And the goal is to always do what's best and make it work and make it right for, you know, for our, our investors, our community members, and people who are just looking to support what we're doing.
and some of the interviews and other things like this interview on LIB radio and you know, I was just talking about the community so and then some other interviews I have you know we do talk about the community but maybe not in details but everything that you see on here is fully in detail about the community and then we have some nice aerial shots of the land um, and uh, homes going up uh, so it's just different types of footage that you'll see and it's just you know just you know, encouraging us as a people to share our experience so, you know, we can all learn and grow from each other's experience and, you know, what, how each of us is doing different things. So that's what we try to do just to set the bar up and set the example. And as you scroll down now, you see some of the homes that are completed now. You see the shell or the foundation of it from the beginning. And then these are some of the videos that I talk about sustainable development. Uh, one video talks about a catch water system. The other one talks about solar system. Uh, so that's a part of the whole sustainable development. And it's encouraging those of us to use new technology to just you know, build your own ecosystem. And as you scroll down and scroll down, uh, then you see the first set of videos. Uh, so. You'll see the dates. It's amazing because it keeps on going. I thought I was finished, but I'm just trying to get to the dates. The dates that you'll see here, you'll see December 2019. And you may see one, one should say September 2019, which would be a conference call. Uh, but uh, those are the earliest set of videos that we have. And uh, we've just documented everything that we have gone through and experienced just to showcase it and let anyone know if you want to connect with us. Uh, this is what we have as far as information. Now, when you go to the website, some of the same things that I went over, on Af um, which our website is africaforafricans.org, but some of the same things I went over on a conference uh, newsletter, uh, that's what you have here. So it's a list of titles. Let us go through the titles. Uh, but the email that I was sent would have all these details also. Uh, that way you just have it on your email. So introduction, uh, site map, land survey, GPS, uh, lands commission search, uh, prime objective, business opportunities, building, buying homes, membership rules and code of conduct, membership application, pitches and videos, committees, uh, which talks about the 10 committees that we went over, uh, bylaws, and then the final one, um, and the most important one, because I want everybody to be clear on this, getting started, land cost requirements, re refund policy for Black South Pan-African communities. So all of that sums it up in the details that will be sent to you via email. And this is for anyone that's online and they're just looking through information. They have, you know, all the time to just process all of it. And these are real views. It's just, you know, it's a popular thing. More and more people are looking for repatriation options. So this is what we offer uh, for us to build a community together. All right, so family, I'm going to stop with the screen sharing. And uh, greetings, everyone, especially if you just um, joined the call. Welcome to the call. Let's go into a few brief details as far as the community, the land, where to access information, uh, what we're up to. I definitely want to make sure we go over the videos and other documentation. So if you're new to the information, you can have, you can process it, go to it. We can, you, know, you can call me separately and we can talk and we can get you set up. And then uh, the goal is, uh, one of the main thing is always to get the surveys because the surveys sometimes take long. So um, once you're committed to a plot, uh, especially once we start doing the 60 acres, uh, the goal is just to have a new, faster, and more expedited process to get land paperwork. And you learn these based on this time in the field of doing the business that you're doing. All right, so family, the line is open, and I want to get my brother Africa in. And uh, greetings, uh, brother Africa. Let me know if you want to unmute yourself. All right, so if you can't hear me now, just unmute yourself when you can hear me. So what I have is the line is open, family. Uh, that was just a brief uh, description. So I did have um, one or two guests, and the goal was to talk about uh, getting us mentally ready to deal with uh, the psychological things that we have to deal with uh, in countries like Ghana, and just dealing with the adjustments and the growth uh, spirit or the growth period of learning the culture and understanding how things are done. Uh, so. Those are things that we always try to just educate and share 
and then also get other people to share information on that way when we're making this move we're making it uh fully conscious uh knowing that uh you know we know what what is you know what things are and um you know whether people should make a certain move or not but i always just put things in the perspective of this uh consulting with the people that we have in place that way you you know you get the best you know you, know, you run you run certain things by the people that we have in place for us to help each other uh, so that's what me and Azibo is there for. Uh, we're there to this. Uh, I'm here managing an operation here in the U.S. And Azibo is there in Ghana. And we're there just uh, working things out and figuring things out. Azibo uh, is uh, there just having an, an experience. Uh, first of all, he's dealing with uh, having uh, the people there that he's working with, building relationship with the people that are security, the people that's working at his business district, other members that are there. And so he's a focal point of someone that's there. And as we add more people to that, you know, to the actual uh, business office, uh, then they'll be doing similar things. Uh, so the energy is, um, is right there. And we just basically just uh, want to keep on letting anyone, everyone know that when you get a chance to visit, pass through, uh, come to, you know, the land, your legal paperwork will be there. And also you just get to see things for yourself. And uh, you can also just get more of a visual and plan things out. All right, uh, so Africa, you're, you are, we are live trying to get you to unmute yourself so you can share some of your experience in Ghana with us as we get uh, more of our people ready. But while uh, the two people are getting themselves ready, uh, the line is open. So if anyone have any questions directly, whether it's about what, what I just talked about, or if you have any questions in general, just uh, go ahead and just give your name, where you're calling from, your question. All right. Um... If I may, um, thank you so very much, Brother Bomani. So while the others are getting themselves ready, I just wanted to, well, this is my very first time um, chiming in and listening uh, to what you have been doing. Uh, I remember Africa for the Africans before I left the United States, before I left uh, Atlanta. Um, came back to Trinidad and Tobago, actually, Tobago actually. Um, and this is something that you uh, and your wife, uh, your, your your compliment was really, really pushing. And and the fact that you're still with it and you've come so far with it, um, it's, it's almost like you guys are like pioneers, you know, um, sort of cutting down or preparing the way for for others to come back and, and not have to start over in terms of knowing how to deal with the, um, with all the requirements and so forth. You know, you all are just putting all of that together. And I really, really, really compliment you on that. Um, I actually, when I saw the information, I thought it was, because I've always wanted to know about the repatriation and the land acquisition or the land repatriation that Ghana and I believe Senate Senegal had extended um, to, to Africans in the diaspora uh, to sort of come back home. And I thought that this was such, this is what you were going to be uh, breaking down, but, but it sounds like this is something where um, you know, you, you have acquired a set of lands. Well, I won't assume that, but, I, but I'll, I'll let you, you speak to that. How the, the land that you're speaking of, the plots yeah, and so um, forth, how yeah, was that acquired? Well, um, well, well, that's what we were talking about during the whole time. I was showing you all of our land paperwork with Black Star name on it, the incorporation of 15 and 16 acres. So that's our land acquisition. Okay, so, so, so you all actually, well, what I mean by how you got it, I'm saying you guys actually paid for it. So you bought the land? Yes, uh, it's a uh, land lease. Um, yeah, their, their terminology and buying and things like that. Is, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're going it's, through uh, the process it's not a land of, lease. Yes, yeah, so you're going through the process of more or less acquiring um, a responsibility, if you will, for this particular land, whether you want to call it ownership or what have you. But that exactly. land segment off and it belongs for all intents and purposes to the corporation Black Star, right? Correct? Yeah, exactly. That's like the Black Star. Have, yeah, absolutely. So right. is, everything is in the name of Black Star. Okay. And now your marketing plots 
at very reasonable cost because I'm seeing things there like $3,000, $4,000. Is that US dollars that persons could acquire a plot for, for, that, for, for that amount? Or, or uh, that? Yes, uh, that is uh, US dollars. Wow, that is, that is excellent. And then, of course, the person is then responsible for their own building and so forth. So they have to have the capital um, to actually, you know, build whatever it is that they, they want to build, whatever size or shape or what have you, correct? Uh, yes, uh, that's correct. Uh, they're responsible for building what they need to, uh, to build. And uh, what that is, that, this, that takes care of the land costs. It takes care of uh, also mm -hmm. legal paperwork and administrative costs. So that's what that is for. But yeah, definitely uh, everyone after this have their game plan ready to build what they need to build. Mm -hmm. Ready, ready to go. I got you. I got you. Very good. Well, well that, that definitely um, gives me um, a better picture um, of, of, of what you're doing there. And I'm, I'm so very, I'm really excited to see it. You know what I mean? It was like, wow, these brothers and sisters are actually going out and just like pretty much starting like, a, um, you know, a civilization, if you will, you know, um, it's really, really good to see what, what you're doing there. Um, and I'll, I'll keep listening to this and reading up on this so I can get more of an idea of what's going on. Um, and, uh, perhaps even look forward to, um, coming on a trip, which will, you know, a, a return trip that you have, those journeys that you have, expeditions. Um, come on that so I can get a real feel for the landmass there. So while in my mind, yes, this is something that, you know, looks good to do. And it is, it is something that I would want to do. One would also have to be able to, to, to justify to oneself that it is something that is practical to do for them and so forth. So coming there first and, and, and seeing what the environment is like, the atmosphere is like and, and so forth. That's something I probably want to start with that. But thank you very much for the information you share. Uh, absolutely, brother. And then you mentioned about repatriation. So uh, yes, when you did meet me um, a while back when we, uh, uh, from Africa for Africans um, to, to what we're doing um, now, uh, this is the, more of the uh, investment aspect of it. But, our, but yeah, it's all about repatriation. This, but uh, trying to come up with more of an organized program to, to, uh, to connect people to living and doing business in Africa. Uh, what I've seen um, is this, we have a lot of individuals who make the move and then it's, it's a lot of, in, you know, and then you next thing you know, you know, you don't have enough leverage or enough people with you uh, to, you know, make it move, make it work because now you have people, you know, you have more people working you over than anything else and taking advantage mm -hmm. of you and delaying your projects and adding themselves into your projects. And that's the issue that we have at, we have at, we have in countries like Ghana. So you see a lot of people going and then a lot of people coming back. Uh, so the aspects of repatriation for us is building a full-fledged pan-African community. So whether you're Ghanaian, Nigerian, Jamaican, Trinidadian, American, uh, as long as you're a black person, that's you know, it's a community for you for us to work in the energy of trying to get some of our own black folks in other parts of the world to come and build as a part of that community or another community or build this you know, black cooperative investments uh, including us doing business in different countries with each other. Because, you know, wherever you go, you see us. And I'm always telling people, more of us should just do business with each other and then keep the network strong. And then, you know, we could build uh, those different operations across West Africa, wherever, to where we just, you know, like those who decide that they just don't want to have anything to do with Africa, they can stay here and, you know, build, build enterprise and we do business together. Uh, because, you know, it's a big percentage of people who are not going to go anywhere. Uh, so trying to lay the foundation to get more people who want to just join forces on an organized energy to be able to just have their piece of land, they, they get a chance to just build their home and then they're in a community of like-minded energy of people uh, that want, want, you know, want a certain things, which is to put your money together and economically compete with the foreigners uh, and not to have them just take up all the investments then, you know, so... It's, it goes in very, it goes, it goes, you know, it's, it's something that goes, you know, it's, it, you know, it's, it's, it's repatriation to, you know, its highest level because you're thinking about generational investments and generational foundation. You're thinking about this, putting uh, your children, where we are is two hours away from the city. So it's more of a situation where uh, the average students, uh, a young boy or young girl are not going to have access to a certain level of education or, you know, or opportunities. 
Uh, so that's what that is also for, uh, to just get more of our young minds into some of the things that, uh, you know, the world is competing in, you know, business, technology, um, you know, all different kind of sciences and things that, uh, that those of us are skilled people who are coming, um, you know, which we have in our network all together, you know, we can have, have a profound foundation on the, uh, you know, in the country. But in order for us to be uh, progressive of what we need to do, we have to be able to just protect ourselves from the foolishness that goes on in these countries and be able to organize ourselves to more where we can be successful. You know, you see the Indians, the Chinese, the Lebanese, they're, they're successful, but what they don't have is they don't have their own people. Like uh, we have our own people sabotaging our efforts, whether it's because of jealousy, envy, or whether it's because, you know, people feel like they maybe can scam some of us. So all these things that, you know, I've seen and been around people and hear people feedback, you know, it's the reason why we're just building something solid. And we talk to our chief there and he understands it. And he's always the one telling me that he's like, you know, he's like, but money, my people know how to chop money, you know, and, you know, and he just, and he started laughing. Uh, but, you know, uh, that's the reality of it, you know. Uh, so that's what you have right here uh, as a Black Star Pan-African community and in more detail of the name, Black Star Repatriation and Pan-African Community. Just building that foundation to where we can just, you know, connect the move, not only this repatriation, but the energy of Pan-Africanism and pushing that spirit on the African continent. Um, and because what you see more of is just people so focused on what they're doing in their own cultural areas and own countries. So trying to make it to where, you know, we can just have a more of a global impact. Because if we have, if all of us are doing business from country to country and we have some level of communities and we have, you know, then, you know, it's a better opportunity for our children. It's a better opportunity for us to be competitive because what last thing we want to do is to know that we have all these skills, these energy in America, and then we didn't connect it to Africa, and then Africa didn't connect with us, and then next you know the all of Africa is dominated by the Asians of the world, which can easily happen. Simple, easy thing that could happen because some I've traveled around the world, and the most ambitious people I've ever been around uh, from going to their countries are you know the groups we call Asians, you know whether they're the Koreans, the Japanese. Um, folks in Singapore, Malaysia, and I've never been to China, but China is the main country. Uh, so with that family, you know, Africa for the Africans, just like, you know, China for the Chinese and so on. So that's what we do in family. And then for those who need help to live, move, and make these moves in countries like Ghana, we got them. Uh, so, and then Tanzania is our next major project that we're going to build up energy that way we can make moves from Ghana and Tanzania together. Since we have had a lot of people from Liberia, move from Liberia, and they end up in Ghana, so that's another thing too, we have that connection. So families are uh, very interested and in, um, all I could say is that uh, anyone who just really just can connect us with, with grant writers, with people who are investors or people who just want land or people who want to just see this thing grow faster, hey, we're available, but if nothing else, we're gonna keep on making the moves and getting things done and do appreciate everyone's contribution, help and support. Uh, and do understand people are busy and tied up, but we'd like to just get some more support and energy from you know, the general population, not just our group population, because what we're building is for our children and the future of us as a people. And um, all the business I've ever been involved in and built, uh, whenever we make our profits and, and business funds, uh, what we do religiously is to support other Black-owned business and invest and patronize other Black-owned business. That's like, that's where I'm going to Senegal and Gambia. Uh, a lot of Black dollars and a lot of Black hands. But our family, the line is open and family, we're still on our Black Star Pan-African community uh, conference call for this March 26. And it is, you know, springtime is here, family. So, Sister Kuvi, Steve, Eon, Af and Africa, I'm still trying to get you unmuted, brother, so you can share your experience there in Ghana. Because the main thing we want to do is want to get people prepared, prepared, educated, organized, ready, and just literally just be able to just you know, ultimately just be prepared to be successful because uh, that's the issue that we have had especially now we are coming more of a younger generation it's not so much people who have retired sold their house and you know they're just chilling and just enjoying paradise in africa now we have to be the nation builders we have to be the ones who are not going to wait to where we're 90 years old before we move to africa which is not wrong being that age moving to africa it's uh, literally fine, but uh, in order to do, but you only can do so much at that age is my point. So 
I'm just thankful I've saved some of my best energy in my life to use it for what we're doing. But some of us are not, you know, some of us are a little further ahead. So we're thankful for what they have done here. And they can also be a part of aspect of that, but we need more young, fresh energy, blood, um, you know, more innovation, um, yes, and so on. And as I talk about the land and developing the community, <laughs> ultimately need more micromanagers. That's what it is. Uh, you just have to have micromanagers and, and things like that. So if you don't understand the definition of micromanagement, you will, you will soon because um, you have to spend unnecessary time to keep up with things that you shouldn't have to. Uh, but that's how we're going to get things done. And my good brother Zebo is supposed to be on here so he can share his experience of all the things he's experiencing and going through. And, you know, we're all standing strong and it's nothing bad or nothing against the people. It's just we understand that um, you know, those of us have different educational level and the different skill level. But at the same time, too, the goal is for us to elevate ourselves. The goal is not for us to, you know, to operate, you know, below substandards. Um, and we have to keep some level of excellence. So that's what we're looking to bring and build. And um, it's it's a good thing. It's uh, elevation. It's uh, creating things that we need to create for each other. Uh, so. So that's the uh, Black Star community. So looking forward to it, um, you know, getting back on the land, um, working with all the new people who are looking to build and you know, working with the builders to help our people build. So these are the things that we have in place and the things available. So the 60 acres is our future and I'm gonna work out this bulldozer deal. But right now everyone is shaking me down. It's like when they, you know, when they realize it's a group of people who live in America, everything change. Uh, it's, and it becomes sickening to a point where you just like, you know, what I tell people, I was like, okay, if that's what you're gonna do, well, work stop and nothing gets done and um, I'll find somebody else and then none of them make any money. Uh, so unfortunately, that's what you have to do after a while. Uh, it's only so much, we're not banks. Um, you know, we'll spend a whole lot of money on this whole project. And, uh, you know, we do have something to show for it, but, uh, uh, you know, you know, we, you know, we need, a, you know, we'd love to have a lot more to show for it. Uh, so, you know, we're not going to spend money on bulldozers and get land cleared and it's not cleared efficient like we needed to. Uh, so after the last land clearing drama and people clearing stuff that they shouldn't clear and not clearing what they need to clear and uh, still expect to get paid, we're not doing these things anymore. So I'm not trying to be rude or disrespectful, but uh, if we're going to get these things done and make these moves where we're going in countries like Ghana, you have to put your foot down. And you have to also let people know this is serious. And the same thing I do, you know, other business, like, you know, when I do tourism in different countries, you know, and I'm famous for firing a lot of people. And I do, for, you know, over a period of time, we replace people. And I tell people straight up, if, you know, it's either, you know, at this office here, no one projects, there's nothing anyone has ever paid me to do here, whether it's from the multitude of business stuff to whether it's web design or whether it's, video production or just anything coming in to do visas or paperwork or getting passports or whatever it is, it just gets done. Uh, so it's hard for me to, to just deal with the fact that we have simple basic paperwork, simple basic things, and they keep on getting delayed. And you know, and the reason why we know these things is we usually have one of our best people to oversee everything, you know, and 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 so on. And you know, you just try to even just you know, pay people a little bit more and encourage them, don't keep up with the foolishness. Cause what you're doing is, you know, when the, you know, you have to strike while the iron is hot. Black people in the African diaspora want to live, they want to do business, they want to build in Africa. You know, we have we have never had this pan-African energy into where we actually want to do things in Africa like we do now. And um, unfortunately, some of us are running into the wrong people. And that's why we always just offer our help, uh, because we know how things work and we know how things go. And um Unfortunately, visionless people will always think about themselves, whether it's the ones here or the ones there in, in, that we're going to more run into in Ghana because we're, you know, I guess we look like glitter and gold, you know. But uh, nevertheless, um, um, I don't believe we should ever let visionless people, whether they're here or there, stop us from building what we need to build for our children, our family, our future, our people, our race, and restoring our ancestors' names. So that's my commitment in America. Uh, or in you know, or in this part of the world and in Africa, and you know, we're gonna keep on pushing, and I'm gonna keep on recruiting people, and keep on working with different people in different parts of Africa, so we can get this done. Like right now, my expansion in Liberia is working beautiful, 
um, you know, meeting all kind of people that, you know, went to one of their banquets. Like I usually do, you know, back in the early days, I used to go to the Ghana banquets at Independence Celebration. That's all we do. And we build relationships. Sometimes nothing comes out of it other than some connections, some networking, and this you know, basic elements of this being social. But if nothing else, you spend some money, you spend some time, and you learn more about your people. Uh, so it's always a win-win situation. Uh, but as far as Liberia, we, you know, we have been able to just work with a lot more people now that we have more experience on how to build a country and build tourism, build real estate investment. And the foundation, well, whatever we build would just be our Black South Pan-African community in Ghana. Anything else we can ever build is an, is an expansion. Any adventures I do, it's another way how we can use some of the you know, profits to invest back in Black South to build our community center, our business center, to get things done. Uh, so that's the good thing about it. You know, we're, we're committed to keep on investing in what we have in the community and making it work. And then our experience now would take us to another level in other countries. You know, like a year from now, when I'm in Liberia uh, with our group, you know, we're going to scope things out. And, and then we definitely have to think about the fact that we're right there in the Atlantic Ocean, right there in West Africa. You know, where are, where's our cruise ships? Where's our you know, cargo ships? And where's our, you know, where's our operation to where you know, we can move people from one part of West Africa to the next? And you know, you know, naturally, you have to build up. Uh, you know, you have to build aspects of uh, immigration because, you know, you it's still going from one country to the next country. So whether it's airport or seaport or this uh, uh, border, uh, you have to have those things. But these are the diplomatic things that we can work out and build. You know, it's, you know, you, know, you have all these countries in West Africa and people like myself have been to several of them and many other people know we've been to, been to others and we can build a relationship. Like right, as I'm talking about West Africa, I'm heading to Senegal and the Gambia two countries right there on the coast. That's a part of that incredible coast. Yeah. And also even been to Togo and Benin. Yeah. And then heading to Liberia. So the majority of countries that I would have been to in Africa is right there in West Africa. And, you know, and that's the majority of countries we have connections, network, and most of our lineage and DNA connection comes from there. So it makes sense for us to get into the elements and work that out. Uh, so as I talk about Black Star Pan-African community, the future and the vision, is that inspiration that uh, we have to encourage other people. Like when we started talking about building black uh, repatriation communities, and when you look around, um, you know, people started coming out of the woodworks after a while. Um, but, you know, that's what you do. You know, you want to influence other people to say, hey, let's come up with some, you know, let's take it to another level. You know, back in the 80s and the 90s, we did Roots and Culture Tour, which is always great. And then now in, uh, in the 21st century, we're doing uh, repatriation and investment tours. Uh, that's the specific title of our Ghana tours and specific you know, title of this, you know, the, the movement we push with our logo. So family line is open. Um, does anyone have anything else to share or you want to join in that conversation? Um, please let me know. Other than that, we're going to be closing out in the next few minutes. All right, it's unfortunate. It sounds very quiet. Uh, Africa, I'm still trying to unmute you. I'm not sure what's on your network. And Sister Kubi, trying to also unmute you also as we get ready for that magical journey to Senegal and the Gambia in a few days. Looking forward to it always, always, family. You, know, uh, you never know, family. We can just have an old incredible network along West Africa, you know, make it the perfect location for repatriation and investment from the Americas to the African continent, uh, Black diaspora Energy. All right, so let me uh, get back to another screen share. Let me see what else I have that I can share. All right, so that's the uh, website and that's actually it. Uh, the only other thing I have is the Facebook and the Instagram page, which is not necessary for this, but uh, went through um, all of our videos. As you can see, family, it's 149 videos. That is all of our documentation for this incredible 
experience on building this Black Star Pan-African community. And then our newsletter that's uh, filled with a whole lot of information and that's uh, And it's always available. That's right there on our website link. It'll say newsletter. So from there, you can just see all of our previous newsletter, which is mainly tours. And then you'll see a few of our energy moving to our Ghana. And that's what we are focused on, making our move to Ghana and just building our energy. But uh, instead of just moving to Ghana and just uh, enjoying our life, moving to Ghana in a more of a community setting where we can literally just live, do business, and just get a lot done, and just avoid all the delays, and avoid all the things that slows us down from making the progress that we really need to make on the African continent. And then all of the uh, poor details from the uh, website. So the other thing that I do have, uh, once again, for anyone who just needs to get an email in reference to what we're doing, as far as Black Star Pan-African Community, I have a nice email with a whole lot of information and all of the digital files that you'd want to just process and look to before you just join any kind of energy like what we're doing. And also advising this, everyone just uh, have people step their game up. Don't just uh, join or connect with people. Make sure that, um, you know, make sure that you see the, the documentation, make sure you see the track record, make sure you see the dedication and make sure you see the updates and things that they're working on. Uh, so uh, iron sharpens iron, so, um, you know, in order for us to build an elevation, you know, we have to step our game up to the highest level and keep on stepping it up. And we shouldn't just do things with people who are clearly just not dedicated to us and have not put the work in. All right, so family, I appreciate everyone for joining us on this uh, Black Star Pan-African Community Conference call today. And I'll keep everyone posted on our group WhatsApp. And um, once I get the next set of um, land surveys uh, com completed, I'll make sure that I get that to everyone and then I'll work on your deed of assignment. So those are the things that I'm pushing for our crew to just get done as fast as possible there in Ghana. And uh, I was trying to this, always literally just trying to this encourage and empower people to this think about the future and think about this getting things done efficient so we can just you know get some you know some more and some more serious business going and just do a whole lot more uh, but it all starts from just getting the basic stuff taken care of and handled and that's what I'm uh, pushing for my brothers and sisters on African continent to do because um, the things that we need to do you know we can handle what we need to get done so that's our delay and that's our dilemma and that's the situation that we're fighting uh, against and um, we're going we're gonna to keep it strong, family. So we've been doing this for a long time and, you know, we're going to get strong and better. And um, we, we, have, we have a whole lot more to share with you. And as time goes along, um, for those who are ready to join in, just join in later on. But, um, you know, you'll just get whatever we have left and available. And then, you know, whatever the cost factor is, it's what it is. Know that uh, when you're doing grassroots and foundation projects, uh, those who get in on the early stage who have to deal with certain things, you know, uh, you end up just having the benefit of the situation, you know, including just getting uh, better access to whether it's lots, uh, you know, lot numbers and things like that. So as you move towards the 60 acres, um, family look forward to this, putting some good things in place and keeping everyone posted. And uh, once we complete our next uh, Ghana tour, We'll have some more highlights and some more updates and um, look forward to this talking with the next set of people ready to build. So family, um, beyond that, if anyone needs to just have uh, any kind of conversation with me, you can text me on WhatsApp and uh, you can also just call me and we can communicate and uh, do my best to communicate with you, especially since we're leaving soon in the next few days. But uh, I keep myself flexible and available. Uh, I know sometimes that's what it is. Sometimes you just need to talk with someone directly and, um, and definitely communicate with me if you're just looking to show up in Ghana. That way we can just get you to the, you know, to see the land. And if you need to overnight, you know, we have in our, our guest rooms uh, there in the, uh, you know, in our community uh, office. So that's it, family. So once again, family, everyone enjoy the night and you take care. And um, we'll keep in touch and I'll keep everybody uh, posted and updated.